a fine building. Carsai Veen RIC barracks. My place of work. Yes, it is unusual. But the Royal Irish Constabulary is a police force after all, and we need a defensive building. Especially down here on the Ivora Peninsula. The diagonally opposed twin towers protect all four walls, as well as the front and rear entrances. From this position, we can survey river and road. We can almost keep up with the smuggling, or free trade, as some of the locals would have it. How's that for a vantage point? You can see right out to Valencia Island, and that's the whole point. You see, there's a telegraph cable stretching all the way from Valencia Island to Heart's Content, Newfoundland, the shortest route across the Atlantic. Oh yes, we're at the heart of global communication here. It took a millionaire to get the whole operation done. An American called Cyrus Westfield, a paper merchant, I believe. He teamed up with an English fella called John Brett, who was the expert in submarine cables. The same man had laid a cable from England to Ireland, do you see? So the missing link was Ireland to America. The old world to the new world. It was done by boat. Took them four attempts before they managed it in 1858, and then the connection only lasted a few weeks. But they did it properly in 1866, and here we are, 1875, and still going strong. It used to take two weeks in favourable weather to get a message across the Atlantic. With the telegraph cable, it takes two minutes. Now, I wouldn't say it's for everyone. If you're Queen Victoria or the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, you can well afford the tariff. But on a head constable's salary like mine, well, let's just say I wouldn't be sending telegrams to me sister in Boston telling her what I had for me dinner. Nevertheless, it has transformed global communications. The strategic importance of the transatlantic cable was not lost on a group of people here in the area who wanted Ireland to have its own government, not to be ruled by Britain. They called themselves the Fenians. Less than a year on from the transatlantic connection being made, they plotted to destroy it, along with the old constabulary barracks that was in the town at the time. It was Shrove Tuesday, 1867. Around 40 Fenians gathered over the water under the cover of darkness. But an informant had tipped off the British forces and Royal Navy gunboats were patrolling the bay. The rebels abandoned their plans to cut the transatlantic cable and indeed to attack our old barracks, which was only a simple dwelling house. It was a lucky escape for us. The Fenian Rebellion, if you'd even call it that, came to nothing at all. But it showed how vulnerable the cable and cable station were, and so the Border Works lost no time in ordering the building of this fine castle of a barracks. There is talk among the locals that this building was intended for the Punjab, and that through some unfortunate incident involving drink, the plans ended up here by mistake. But that's a myth. This is exactly the right building for Cahir Saiveen, where Europe and America are united by telegraph.